Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vol. This video is brought to you by Jasper, who asked how you can import STL files and edit them in Blender from other sources. This is going to cover how to import STLs into Blender and some of the common problems and pitfalls you might find, as well as a couple of tips of different ways that you can modify those STLs once you've got them inside Blender. Before I proceed with this video, there are a few things that I should preface this video with, especially that some files you aren't licensed to edit, so you need to pay attention to where you're getting your files from. For example, generally files from Thingiverse are acceptable for being edited, and personally myself, if you take any of my files from CG Trader, you're more than welcome to edit them for your own personal use. I'll also say that any files that you obtain online for free, again, for example, from Thingiverse, you should not be putting these files up for sale in any way, as it doesn't provide anything for the original sculptor, whose designs obviously you've used to augment your own. I'll also add that whenever you do so, you should credit the person whose files you've taken wherever possible. After all, it's just the decent thing to do to give the credit where it is due. Now Jasper was asking specifically about one of the models that I have in CG Trader, which is this Gasling Array. And he was asking how he could bring that into Blender to add some additional detailing and specifically how to make some sort of mohawk type metal trim over the top. So we'll cover the importing of that first and then come back to the modification after. Thing we need, so the first thing we need to do is allow the add-on that's gonna permit us to import STLs. And in Blender Preferences, if we go to Add-ons and type in STL, that will come up with the Import Export STL Format option. And once you've ticked that, you'll find that you've got that option in the file settings. So File, Import, and then it will allow you to bring in an STL. So once you've found the file that you've downloaded, simply double click on it and it will bring in the STL. And sometimes you need to pan around to be able to find that. Now, when I tab into this, we can see that STL files are triangulated and that can cause some problems with editing. For example, if I wanted to start editing out this line of detail here that's put in, uh, which is gonna get in the way if we want to put in this sort of mohawk type design in the middle, then we're gonna to have to spend a little bit more time making sure that works. So let's get on with that now, just cause it was one of the things that was specifically asked about by Jasper. And if I select all of these points, and delete these. I would normally be able to fill this in by just clicking all of the vertices along this and clicking F to fill, but that makes the assumption, if I do that now and press F, that this is a flat face that's being created and that doesn't always hold true. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. Now in this instance, because it's a design that I created, I do know that this is flat, but we're gonna have a look at what to do if we didn't, just as a quick tip for when editing STLs. So the best thing we can do is try to keep this to individual smaller shapes as opposed to one large face. And that's relatively easy to do in Blender. If I just tap into edge mode, and just select the single edge at the end. If I use the F button for fill, what that will try to do is make quads. So here you can see it attempting to make the best possible quads. And for example, sometimes that's gonna cause a little bit of a mess. For example, there, that doesn't look very nice. So in this instance, I'll go into vertex mode and do something to sort it out. For example, if I select those three vertices and select F, then I'm gonna make a triangle there. And then when I go back into edge mode, and select that edge and carry on. I'm gonna make neater rectangles and therefore this is gonna cause a lot less problems for Blender as I come to try and take this out into an STL format. Now at this point, once you've done that and you've filled in any areas that you want to, it is generally best to go into object mode and add any additional details that you want to as totally separate objects and then combine those meshes together using a Boolean. If you do want to see that, then I'm going to add that to the end of this video so you can have a look at that there. But for now, we're going to move on to another problem. Now for this second tip or issue that you can often get with importing STLs, I'm going to be importing a file from Thingiverse. And this is a Vengeance Cruiser that's part of a Grand Cruiser pack from HB3D. And he notes that a lot of the original parts of this are from a creator called Italian Moose who creates some fantastic 3D designs. Now, the second we come into this, we can notice that there's a few issues here. You can normally see that as you start to have a look around. 
uh, you might notice small little errors or when you start to try to manipulate the object you'll find that you have some problems for example if I start to move inside this you'll notice that there's some geometry internally which is going to cause some problems you can see that here now we can if we use the 3d print toolbox have a look at cleaning this up and checking for problems and if I click check all you can see there's quite a lot of issues in terms of intersect faces and if I try to clean this up this is going to have some problems with it for example here we can see that that's made more issues and we can tell that just by the shading issues in the screen and that is one of the issues that Blender has when trying to deal with these imported objects and you can see a lot of errors on those faces there but there is an alternative that I've generally found more successful so let's delete that out now we've just gone into a program called 3d builder this comes with most Microsoft computers nowadays but you can download it for free from the Microsoft App Store and if I go to where I've got this file saved and open it you'll see it starts bringing it in asks you what units that you want to have this in always keep it as millimeters and you'll notice that the programs found that there are issues with this and if I click the repair button it will start repairing this file and I've actually found this has generally been very successful in fixing most issues I've had with the STL files that I've downloaded now that can take a bit of time depending on the complexity of the file but you should notice that now it's got a file that's perfectly happy with so what I'm going to do is save that and change the format to being an STL and I'm going to call that vengeance check With that, I can go back into Blender and import that file. And hopefully now, when I go to check this, it should come up with less issues, which it does with less intersecting faces. So hopefully that's gonna cause less problems. Now just test that out and do something a little fun. I wanted to make a token for when a cruiser has been destroyed. So all I'm gonna do is go into side view Activate Box Cutter. If you haven't downloaded Box Cutter or Hard Ops, it's fantastic for Blender and brings a lot of additional functionality to it. And all I'm going to do is press D, change that to a slice, and I'm going to change that to an Engon Cutter. We're just going to use that to create a jagged edge that's going to make this cruiser look like it's been blown apart by some sort of explosion. If I come over to our Modifiers panel, apply that, we should now have a separate piece that's going to cause us no issues. And if I wanted to, I could rotate that around and put that in place to make some sort of interesting destroyed object and maybe model some sort of explosion inside that. So that should cover some of the major pitfalls of bringing in objects into Blender as an STL and how to deal with those problems. If you found that useful, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any requests of videos that you'd like to see, please do put them in the comments section. Now I'm just gonna go back to that other file that we were working on, just in case anyone's interested in how we're gonna create this Mohawk design that's been requested by Jasper. So I'm gonna start by bringing in a cube, bringing that up to where the approximate height we want it. I'm bringing it to the position where we want, somewhere relatively central, and I'm going to try and bring that down as close as I can to the correct height, using G and Z just there. And I'm leaving that so it's overlapping slightly so that we don't have any problems when we're combining our meshes. Going into face mode, I'm going to grab this face, G and Y to bring it all the way out to the other side. And I'm going to have to grab this face here, because otherwise we're going to have this overlap, G and Z to bring that up so it's going to be totally inside the mesh. Just checking that there to make sure that the height's correct. So we want this part to be raised up. Let's go back into face mode. E to extrude and constrain it on the Z axis. Let's go for something about there. S and X. So we can bring that in so it has a more interesting taper. In fact, I'm going to bring that up slightly more to about there. Now overall this is looking a little bit wide compared to the other trim. If I go to above we can see that. So let's tab out into object mode, S and X, and scale the whole thing on our X axis to make it a little bit more 
in keeping with the rest of our trim. Into side view, and let's make this mohawk a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna bring in a cylinder. Let's add some more vertices. Maybe for 128, something that's gonna look nice and round regardless of the scale. G to bring that up. R and Y to rotate it 90 degrees, so we've got that side on. Let's bring that over to here and press Shift and Z so I can see where that is and get that as accurate as I can to that corner. Don't need to do any more than that. I'm going to scale it so that it goes down to where we're joining on the side to make that a little bit neater. Come out of wireframe mode. G and X to get that in the correct place. Then we need to control A to apply our scale. Otherwise we're going to have problems later. Add modifier array. Let's get rid of that relative offset. We want a constant offset so we know the distance apart. We don't want it going on the X. We want it going along the Y. And let's just up that by dragging it along. I'm going to do this by eye. We more just want the distance for later. Let's just go to about there. Again, so it's coming down on that side. And that should look quite interesting. We can fiddle with this later. So all I'm going to do, check that it's gone all the way through, which it has. Shift select the mohawk type bit. Control and minus to take it off. And then let's have a quick check that that's looking about right. So this G and Z needs to move down slightly to about there. Let's have a look at the other end. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to press H to hide that. And we've got this sort of metal mohawk with these four raised bits that look pretty interesting. Right, let's add a bit more detail. Now, before I do that, I'm going to press Q. Now, this is because I've got hard ops, so I can use ever scroll to bring this back. If not, you can just unhide it here. When you've only got one object, it's not particularly difficult. And I want to remember what that Y distance is. In fact, I'm going to copy it for what we're going to do next. So let's click off of that. So let's hide that and let's bring in another object. So we're going to bring in another cylinder. RY90 to get it turned this way we want it. G, bring it up to about there. Let's go into X-ray mode so we can see this a little bit better. It's looking pretty central. Let's scale that down somewhere about there. Come out of X-ray or wireframe mode. G and X, and let's end in that into it so it's going to make a, a little interesting section that's been removed. Control and A, apply our scale, otherwise we're going to have problems. And again, we're going to add an array. We want a constant offset. Zero on the X, along our Y, we want our 4.25. And you'll notice now that is going to be perfectly in the center of each of these ridges. Let's up our count. So we've got one in each. And we want this on both sides. So again, using hard ops, I'm gonna select the thing that I want it to be mirrored across. Alt and X. And now I've got that on the other side as well. Select both objects with the active object being the one that's gonna have the thing deleted from it. Control and minus, hide that. And we've got this nice, interesting looking sort of mohawk along the top as a bit of an extra detail. Just going to apply those booleans, do my quick standard checks of having a look if there's anything wrong with face orientation. There is not. And then I can just boolean these together. Apply that. Hide that. And now we've got our modified gasling array. Now with some extra detail across the center. That's going to look quite nice. And just give your model something a little bit original and unique when that gets printed out. If you did stay around for that last bit, thank you very much. I really appreciate it and I hope you found that interesting. I did go through those things quite quickly, but if there's anything you saw that you'd like covered in a little bit more detail, as always, do mention it in the comment section and I'd be happy to do a video on anything that I just did. But I do intend in the future to do some more detailed videos on Hardop's Unbox Cutter, so we'll cover those in more depth.